Turtle Nerds, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I wanted to showcase the long awaited, heavily anticipated pond build of this 4,000 gallon ecosystem complete with two waterfalls, two streams, fog filtration, a 75 gallon pond in the upper stream, a sandy area for the turtles to bask, lay eggs and nest, and wooden posts all the way around in order to keep all of the animals contained. In all, this project cost me about $1,700 and I did it all by hand. No machinery except shovels and wheelbarrows. This video is just gonna be the process in which I take you through me actually constructing the entire thing. By no means is this a how-to, it's just sort of a general guide of my thought processes and how I was able to do this. I also just wanted to say thank you to all the people who donated to me on Patreon because without them, this would have been a lot more difficult. So if you guys are new here, make sure to go and head over to my Patreon and consider supporting me there so I can continue to fund projects such as this one. With that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. Our story begins back in December when I decided to first begin digging the pond. So I did not film really at all yesterday because I wanted to prioritize getting things done, but he keeps eating dirt and knows that he's not allowed. His dog is on crack. He also took my glove. Anyway, I went around and made the shelf and then uh, I made it level and yesterday I cleared out all of the dirt in the middle part. Now today is going to be making a shelf all the way around. This is where I'm going to be putting my rock. It's how I'm going to hide my liner. No time lapses, unfortunately, because I don't have a tripod and because it takes forever for me to dig this stuff because it's just me. I'll just come back when I'm when I'm making progress. There's me. It's uh, 30 something degrees right now. It's 8 30 in the morning. Everyone's asleep because I want to get this done. I was way too excited. Anyway, I'm gonna get back to it. See you guys when this hole is finished. Okay folks, so this is what I was able to get done yesterday. This is about now two and a half feet from yesterday. All that's left now is I've begun raking this all back for today. But like I said, this is two and a half feet deep now. Now the next step is to go down the last six inches. Is, it's gonna be a little bit of a pain and what's cool is I live near the beach so I'm hitting sand at only like three feet down dog is still eating dirt and sticks. This is day four now. We're at about three feet down. I need to just like carve up the walls a little bit. See that everything's kind of sloped. There's still a lot of like excess dirt in here. But what I have to do is take the flathead shovel and like form out and like carve the walls. We're about three feet in now. You can see over here like I can carve the walls nicely but I just need to get rid of all this. Basically today I just need to clean up. So it needs to look like this all the way around. Do you see how that's like a nice sheer wall? I had to make a new dirt pile because it's easier to just scoop it up onto there and then I need to reform this shelf because this is all starting to cave in which sort of sucks but I'll get her done the walls are all cleaned up these are nice and steep now so skimmer is gonna go over there waterfall is gonna be right here and I'm leaving a little bit of like I said wiggle room over there that's probably gonna be it for work for a little while I got Christmas and whatever coming up so I will be back I don't even know my next step a lot of freaking dirt. Uh, after a couple weeks, uh, I had some stuff to do. So I've been able to work on the pond, but a bunch of sand washed in from the rain. You can see that's all sort of sliding in, which is pretty annoying. So I need to come back in, recarve out the walls. But right now it's in a stable spot because it's rained heavy since then. I'm just gonna leave it right now until I can get a liner in and get water in it. And the pressure of the water will keep all of that from caving back in. And now the task at hand is to push this all back this way. Raise this up maybe two feet. Right now I'm just doing a little bit of grunt work just to get a lot of that dirt over here and then sort of see what happens I suppose. So remember like, I don't know, an hour ago when I had no idea what I was doing because I was like, ha, ah, a lot of dirt, not enough space. This whole thing is starting to take shape. So essentially what I need to do is come in here with more blocks. Gonna take this dirt and wheelbarrow it out. Step on this, get my socks all gross. It's a look. Water's gonna fall out here. I need to put some more cinder blocks right back there and round it out here. Get more cinder blocks up and around here. Take some cinder blocks and form the bog. Then put down the, the liner and get started. I also have to move the cinder blocks and move everything over to the right to make room for the border of posts that I'm gonna have around this whole thing in order to contain the turtles. Excuse the wind. I also have way too much dirt here for the bog and everything. I thought I would be able to make use out of all of it. But I will not. All this dirt I need to clear out and I need to finish placing all of my cinder blocks. Hi, buddy. Hi. 
What are you doing? I'm breaking a lot of cinder block rules, i.e. keeping it all level, i.e. having all of the corners touching, facing inwards. This is all just for general structural integrity. So I'm gonna go ahead and take as much dirt as I can, start leveling it all out, and then see how much extra dirt I have. Uh, my dad and I got quite a little bit done, and I didn't film it because I'm dumb, but the bog is really starting to take shape here, and uh, these stones aren't gonna stay there. They're mainly just for reference. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dig down another Another six inches or so basically right down there there's gonna be a little shelf all the way around that allows me to place these stones in order to hide the liner after I dig this down and I get it all smoothed out and I make the waterfall and stream right here what I'm gonna do is get the liner in here so today's goal get this dug out and then get this dug out and nice and neat and then finish these walls I gave myself a lot of extra room because I didn't know what type of rocks I would be using there's really no rocks available unless I go out two hours from here what I need to do is go to the only place that I found that sells rocks and see just about how expensive it is and how much for delivery because I'd rather not pick up one to two pallets of rock. If it's super expensive and it's just not worth it and it's not happening, then guess what? I'm doing these rocks all the way around in the main pond. Anyway, uh, let me get back to digging. Okay, so this is the bog area that I have. I carved out this little stream area and then the main pond, I still actually have to dig out some because a lot of the rain sort of washed some of the dirt in and whatnot. I'm making progress here and I got this little stream starting to get marked out. It's pretty fun. So I was gonna go around and put the cinder blocks where this decorative rock is because I was gonna say, why would I use decorative rock when I can use cinder blocks that don't look as good? But it's the same price and these are already in place. So you know what, screw it. I'm leaving on this block and put another round of block just right on top of this one after I backfill it. And then I'm gonna fill that back in because I don't need to dig anymore because I have enough dirt. And ta-da! I did not film enough, but I need to get things done more than I need to film. So I have the liner, you can see all the way around. I put my block sideways on top of the other block. I'm gonna start filling this because it's gonna thunderstorm tomorrow and I refuse to let this thing fill back up. So I'm getting my underlayment. We got some carpet taken up, so I'm just using the stuff from that. This I had actually real underlayment from the last pond and it fits kind of perfectly. It goes into the stream, I'm gonna double up the line liners like a lot. I'm gonna go get my other liner and get it going. It's a 40 by 40 liner and I only need like 20 by 20. So I have to get it and cut it. It's gonna be freaking sweet. So this is allegedly a 38 by like 39 liner and I thought I would have tons left over to like you know sell and cut and there's really not much and we're actually a little short over here even. I need to get this done because there's like I said, a thunderstorm tomorrow. I have to fill up this using a small garden hose. And this has been running for like 40 minutes and you can see that it barely has filled at all. Our water pressure is garbage and this would probably take almost all night to fill. So I don't really have a choice though, ha <laughs> ha. This little toad hopped in the pond. He's probably tired from all that swimming. Poor little buddy. All right, turtle nerds, I look like total butt. That's fine because I am really getting this thing together. You can see I got these paver blocks that I planned on using and the only issue was that they weren't really fitting right. So I had to put gravel in order to like support and build up some of them. Tomorrow's plan is to fold the liner back and backfill. Take this, fold it backwards, put it in like this and then put dirt and just make it a seamless. And I'm thinking that that should look nice but I might then go ahead, I might order like a half pound of those and go around like that go all the way around first i need to get it folded in and dirt on it and if i don't feel like making that expense and i don't feel like doing it then you know what i won't with that being said i'm getting eaten alive thank you guys for following me along this crazy little adventure i'm gonna shower go eat some dinner and call it a day until tomorrow what I'm doing today is cutting the excess liner, still leaving myself a little bit of room and a lot of extra room over here because I need to still make my skimmer. And I'm going around and hiding the edge. Right there is an example of what I want the finished product to look like. So what I'm doing is taking my liner, folding it backwards, and then I'm backfilling. I kind of can't do it one-handed. I can give you an example, sort of. See, we tuck this back. And now I'm gonna backfill and lower this like this. And then I put my little stones on top, except I've run out of little stones. So that's all I have. So I need to wait until I go to Home Depot and I need to go get some more. In order to test the water level of the bog, I've filled it. And that's what it's gonna look like when it's filled. So I've gone around and made sure that everywhere that it comes back into the folds, I've made sure that it can't really get anywhere. You see, it's just sort of stopped. Aha, uh -huh. so this, compare this little bit of dirt and mud over here, over here. 
with this. So clearly, this is the lowest point. Yep, see this water all came up in here. This is what I was talking about. And this is why I filled up the bog, specifically so I could look and find when it does this and be able to fix it. Just clear out some of this mud and make sure that it's upright. Make sure that the water can't come through here because that's where it was escaping from. It also rained, so clearly it overflowed. This is a spot that I'm gonna have to look out for when I finish my waterfall. My waterfall is gonna be there. There's one tier of drop, second tier there, and another waterfall is going right there. You'll see about that. Okay, folks, so today what I did was I went back to Home Depot. I got all of my bricks and my little blocks, and I have now begun going all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, get these blocks in place, and then go eat some dindin. He's a freaking toad. Okay, folks, so for today what I'm doing is I'm cutting PVC pipe that's going to go in the bog and distribute the water evenly. Let me show you. So the water is going to come through here or come from this way. There's going to be a 90 degree elbow that sends it down to the bottom. And then there's going to be a main line down the middle and then pipe that comes off the sides of it. Let me show you what I mean because I've already cut the main line to size. All right, so my tripod is broken. So I have to use whatever I have here in order to film. We have my main line right here and I've cut it into these pieces because I'm gonna have these T's in order for the water to go and split off into the directions that I want it. Realistically, the main line should look like this. Every foot, I'm gonna have some pipe coming out either end to go and distribute the water evenly. Now I'm gonna go and take this over to the bog and fit it and see how long I need to make these side pieces and then get cutting. Uh, now I have this all roughed in. This I'm still figuring out what to do. I think I need another 90. I need to cut this piece longer and then put another 90 that comes up right here. Another one of the clean out pipes right there. However, I need to now take apart these pipes and start getting my slits in. And then tomorrow buy a whole ton more. Hello, bird. And then tomorrow buy a whole ton more fittings because I used up all of my 90s. Great. So here I'm going on my PVC. I'm marking spots every about inch and a half and that's where I'm going to be putting my little slits. There we go, we've got our little slits. All right, listen folks, uh, I'm shirtless to get an even tan because I have a farmer's tan right now, I look like garbage. I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to film or get done, because you might be able to hear my allergies are murdering me today. I had zero symptoms every other day, and now today I am dying. Regardless of that, I wanna show you guys my progress and see what I can get done before I have to take a shower and lay down and die. Okay folks, so I was working on the pond actually while in class. Uh, I had my mic muted and I had my video turned off and I just had my headphones on listening to my professor in lecture. But during that time, I got all of this done. As we can see right there in the stream, I am beginning the process of constructing the waterfall. 80 bucks. The water is gonna come here and hopefully shear right off. And so I'm kind of hiding the liner on either side. But in order to do so and force the water up and over the waterfall, I have foam expanding uh, pond building foam. This stuff that I fill all in here the cracks in here underneath this whole thing and I'm gonna use it to seal my pieces of liner together along with some silicone so I'm gonna go ahead and, and do that uh, and I'm just using some DIY foam so everything looks in disarray these pipes going across but I'm about to fix that by putting the skimmer right here after foaming the stream and the waterfall there it is so I used this massive rock that I had you can see right there where the water comes down that's where the liners overlap I made sure to ensure that it was up behind where this rock was, otherwise the water was pooling up and just going back there and leaking out. The water now, rather than pooling up, it comes and shears straight across. Of course, the water is not filled nearly to where it should be, but that will be fixed by the end of the day when I finish stream and waterfall number two and when I get my skimmer in place. Here's a piece of driftwood that I dragged out of the forest and carried like a mile and a half. Here's the waterfall. The foam forces the water over this way, it comes down, and then we get that beautiful looking shear that I want so this poor little guy made his way into the pond. He's a little legless lizard. You're free to go, buddy. This little toad fell in the skimmer and he's a little bit weak. So I put him next to some bugs so he can eat them. And I cover him up with this little piece of PVC. So that way he can feel more secure. There's already all of this wildlife coming to the pond and it's not even done yet.
Over here, what I did was, this is my clean out pipe. Right now there's water running through this, down to the bottom, into that manifold, and all the water's coming up through all of this gravel. There is larger gravel on the bottom, and then the pea gravel on top. This is gonna be my clean out pipe that I'm gonna have come down to there. So all I have to do is turn that knob and the water will start shooting out. This is the beautiful bog with all my clean out pipes and the caps on them. This is a pipe, so that way, when I want to clean out the bottom of this, I can put my hose, I can clean out, open up these caps, put the hose down there, blast out all the sediment, and then throw a pump down here. So now I'm just doing some edge work because I have a lot of extra pea gravel. So the next task is going to be to foam and complete this area and blend this all into the landscape and get it to look good. But yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. I just plugged in the second pump. The water's starting to come out. Let's see how waterfall number two is going to look. Here we go. Yeah, this is what I was afraid of. There's just not enough water pressure to get that thing going. Not enough gallons per hour. That's what 800 gallons an hour gets you. Well, I suppose I'll just upgrade my pumps. Hidden here with just this part showing is this absolute unit. It's you. You're the unit. We're getting this in the truck. We're doing it. Off the side of the highway. We're doing it. <sighs> Dubs. Why would anyone buy lily pads when there are perfectly good ones right off the side of the highway. Come on guys. All you need to do is get ankle deep in mud, bring a shovel and some clippers, and dig them out. Only stupid people who buy lily pads, right? Imagine this, but upright like that, except all the way around the pond. That is how I will keep the turtles in. Now I've begun digging out and making the wall. There's very minimal space between here, so no turtle can realistically get through there, except maybe a pancake tortoise, which are a desert species, and I don't plan to put in this pond. posts are in, the turtles can't get out, so it's time to release them in the pond. I'm sorry that I'm rushing, but I feel bad I've got them in these small enclosures for right now because I tore out their old ones. All right, let's get this going. They now have this entire pond as their domain. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys stuck out to the end, a special thank you to you select few. Make sure to hit the bell notification thingy and the subscribe button to see more of my other videos and more to come on this pond. I'm gonna be breaking the pond up into many parts so I can showcase each individual aspect of the pond in more detail. Shout out to my patrons who helped fund this build. If you guys could head on over there, they got to see this video before anybody else did. Thank you guys again so, so much for watching, for your support, and I will see you all in the next one.